Hi guys, as you know, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is only shown on the half of the screen in uh, Volvo with sensor system. Now take a look at this. I'll press and hold the home button. And we have full screen wireless Android Auto in our XC40. In order to make it happen, we had to install the so-called uh, CarPlay Android Auto module. It gets installed in parallel to the OEM head unit and allows us to have a separate system running together with the original sensors. I'll show you what I mean. I will press the home button once and it gets us back into the sensor system. And as I showed you guys before, you can either press and hold the home button to get to the Android Auto interface or there's another option. You can also swipe with two fingers from top to the bottom and it does the same thing. It takes you to the Android Auto interface. The new module supports the original sound system so you can uh, play your music, play your podcasts, use uh, Spotify for example from your phone and it will play through the original speakers in the vehicle. You can use these controls to change tracks, for example, sp uh, play and pause audio. You can use controls on this panel as well. Again, same idea, change tracks this way. And you guys can also use uh, steering wheel controls, it will also work. Again, I think this is great, and like I said, if you guys want to use other applications, for example, like uh, Spotify, let me find it, it's right here. Like I said, it will also work. As for the Google Maps, guys, again, it's full screen, which unfortunately was not an option in the census system. Um, you can... Uh, search you can use uh, previous addresses which you have in your history or you can enter new ones uh, let's do for example library it's all touch screen uh, we'll choose this one and uh, let's travel i don't know let's travel to the furthest one right now we'll start it and um, now we can preview our route uh, we can uh, uh, recenter you can uh, zoom out you can zoom in this way besides that we've got uh, all the regular settings that you'll find in the Android Auto interface we have live traffic uh, data uh, provided by uh, our smartphone which means you don't have to pay for any uh, additional subscriptions it's just your smartphone bill, that's it, and you have live data in your map. We can do the satellite map and it will look like this. Uh, I'll zoom out and zoom in. Looks quite good. It's not as crisp as uh, the original uh, sensor system, but still the quality is quite good and I find it fully acceptable. Uh, I'll change it back we can do 3d buildings for example we'll have uh, uh, audio guidance once we start driving and uh, we can again change different route options basically all your uh, regular settings uh, what else uh, it's unmuted right now you can also change the orientation of the map we can have the perspective view for example we can have north up and this is how it's going to look like. Of course, guys, you can make phone calls from here. Hello? No, oh, hey, hey, it's me. I'm just testing the system right now. You can just say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> thank, thanks, thank you. The system's, the system's working. It does, it does. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. The new module fully supports uh, the backup camera, so when I engage the reverse gear, you will see the backup uh, image. Uh, this XC40 comes with 360 degree uh, bird's eye view camera. 
which as you guys can see also works uh, once I put it back into park it will turn off and provides us uh, the image of uh, our map as for the installation we had to remove a couple of trim pieces in order to get access to bolts that uh, hold our head unit in place after that we could take it out and uh, in the back we had to connect two T-splitters in the back of the head unit besides that uh, the box was hidden inside this central console and we also had to connect two CAN bus wires uh, to the original wiring inside the vehicle which is located underneath this seal in some other Volvo models you can also connect CAN bus wires to this uh, connector to the wiring uh, behind this connector under the passenger seat uh, unfortunately in XC40 it doesn't have these wires and like I said guys all the necessary CAN bus wiring can be found right here underneath the seal in order to run the wire, uh, we removed the passenger seat uh, and ran the wire underneath the carpet in the frame, approximately right here. You don't have to remove the seat, there are other ways how you can uh, run the wire to the seal. Once I enter and uh, start the vehicle, it will uh, take a few seconds for the system, for the new device to load. Again, like I said, guys, it's all wireless. This is our phone. And uh, shortly, we'll be able to access our Android Auto interface. So I'll press and hold this button. And here it is. And like I said, it only takes a few seconds. And uh, by default, it will start in the census system. And then you guys have to again press and hold uh, the home button to enter the Android Auto interface. Right now, we'll go for a short drive and we'll show you guys how Google Maps uh, work. Again, uh, let's go here. And west toward Patterson Avenue. Like I said, we have voice notifications, and once we turn off the backup camera, it will immediately appear on the screen. You can use 360 degree camera as well. In 50 meters, turn right onto Patterson Avenue. In 200 meters, turn right onto Willingdon Extension. There was a slight delay, but I think it has to do with uh, uh, the GPS in the phone. Other than that, it works like it should. Take the next left onto Imperial Street. Uh, we will actually not listen to the lady right now. Make a U-turn. Which we won't do. In 500 meters, make a U-turn at Joffrey Avenue. So shortly it will uh, reroute us. Turn right onto Boundary Road North, then make a U-turn. see any uh, major delays or problems with the map it Make does uh, work like it should other than the U-turn and like I said guys it is full screen right now I'll show you guys how to uh, remove and how to connect new phone to the system first of all we will uh, exit from our Android Auto and this is the original menu of the device. We have the home button. This basically just takes you back to the sensor system Does the same thing at the home button 
we've got Android Auto, we've got Apple CarPlay, once we connect uh, iPhone, we've got AV in, DVR, again these are different options that we won't touch right now. In the settings I want to point out a couple of important things. First of all, in the audio settings you have to make sure that you use original Bluetooth audio, it's on, because our phone uses uh, original Bluetooth in the vehicle. Um, and we have wireless Android Auto settings. Currently we have uh, Bluetooth per device list, GA Think. Uh, so what I'll do right now is I'll go to the uh, information and I'll do the reset. So I will remove our phone uh, connected device from our module and uh, uh, actually it will reboot right now. So if I press and hold the home button it actually won't take me back to the uh, Android Auto or the module. It will take a few seconds for the device to reboot and then we'll be able to access it again. I will press and hold this button again and let's check. We go to settings, wireless Android Auto settings, uh, per device list and now it's empty. In the Bluetooth settings of the phone we need to do another thing uh, before we proceed. We have to actually disconnect from our Volvo vehicle. So I will unpair the device. So right now our phone is not connected uh, neither to the CarPlay or Android Auto module or to the vehicle itself. At this point we are basically starting from scratch. Right now when we press and hold this button it won't give us Android Auto option because we don't have any devices connected at the moment. So we'll cancel that and go out. Before I proceed to the wireless Android Auto connection uh, I want to point out that you can also do the wired connection. This uh, USB cable comes from our module which again is hidden inside the central console and now if I connect the phone to this wire shortly we'll have uh, basically the same Android Auto interface but in this case it's connected using the USB uh, cable you guys can use that as well if you want but I know that not all people like that uh, this is actually the quicker um, option uh, but you do need to use the USB cable in this case. In order to enable our uh, wireless Android Auto connection first we'll have to connect uh, our phone with our uh, vehicle. So for that you have to when you guys do it for the first time you have to go to settings you go to communication Bluetooth devices and here you will need to connect uh, your phone. We have it right here, GA Think, it has already been connected. Press confirm. So it will provide us the postcode. Confirm it in the phone and in the system, finish. And now the phone has been connected. So we'll, we'll have the uh, sound right away and uh, uh, one more important step guys you need to make sure that uh, in the media so if you press this button here on the steering wheel and you go to you go to media you have to choose the Bluetooth as uh, this source for your uh, sound Otherwise, you may not have uh, uh, the sound. So now we do have it. Now our phone is connected to the vehicle using Bluetooth, but we still don't have uh, Android Auto connection, as you can see. So now I'll have to go to press Android Auto here. And it says turn on uh, phone's Bluetooth and search for this number and connect it. So I will go to Bluetooth settings right now and as you can see it's currently connected to my Volvo and besides that when you guys do it for the first time it will be right here but since I have already been connecting it before we will press uh, uh, information here the to pair with CX etc press pair 
and now it's actually connected to both. It's connected to the uh, my Volvo car and it also is connected to our device. And as you can see now we've got wireless Android Auto interface. I will also quickly show you guys that it works with uh, Apple CarPlay. So we'll connect the USB cable to the phone. Again the cable is connected to our USB uh, cable for the module and now I will go and press this uh, home button and uh, here we are. Now we have the Apple CarPlay available in our Volvo full screen as well. This is how it looks guys for those of you who use the uh, iPhone. Can we can zoom in, zoom out, etc. We have uh, again we have uh, Spotify here, and in this case, I'll try to play, play something. So in this case, what will happen? Music will actually play through the iPhone, and the reason for that is because I haven't connected it to the vehicle Bluetooth, like I explained before. This step needs to be done in order to be able to uh, play music through. Uh, the original uh, system sound system in the vehicle but other than that yeah look at that Apple CarPlay looks great and uh, works full screen in our Volvo XC40 uh, to sum it up guys I think this device is a great option for those who like to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay uh, I personally love Google Maps and uh, now we have them wireless and full screen in the XC40 40, which uh, was not the option in the census system as for the installation uh, it's not the most basic one but it is doable and uh, we'll show you more or less all the steps later in the video uh, in case if you guys like this uh, device I will leave the link in the description and now let's see how the installation was done we'll start the removal from this side to pry the black plastic then you have to push a little bit the panel over there and now you could remove the whole assembly uh, one more time I want to point out the importance of pushing this, uh, this stream in first because it overlaps right here, it goes on top of the plastic, that's why it may not come out easy. So before you guys remove it, simply press here and uh, get this piece of trim uh, free. Now we can disconnect this connector this provides power to our ambient LED lighting you may want to use a small uh, knife or flat screwdriver to open it up like this and then uh, you can take it out And again guys, this is how our LED element looks like. And in order to disconnect and remove it, this is a procedure that you have to do. And this is a part number for the trim piece, which we just removed. This LED was located right here, the way it works. There's only one small LED element right here, which you can see and it provides light through this glass tube as you can see which later goes and supplies uh, the lighting for the whole LED element now we need to remove two bolts uh, that hold the plastic trim around the instrument panel You will need to use the Torx uh, bit for this one. The bit is TX25. I 
after the bolts have been removed now you can pull uh, the trim towards yourself side by side top and bottom this gives us access to the second small piece of trim which you can remove using your fingers only and behind this small trim piece there will be another bolt which we need to remove we will use the same torque speed And one more uh, bolt or screw on this side. Now we can remove the head unit together with the vents. And on the inside we've got a couple of connectors. Besides two screws, we've got four clips that hold it in place and uh, right here we've got the part number for the head unit and as we said two connectors. I'll show you how it looks underneath. We've got the LVDS connector, we've got the power connector, again our air vents and uh, behind it there is actually not that much space uh, mainly because of the air vents which also share this space with the head unit the next step will be to remove first this side panel you can open the glove box and then pull it off comes out again pretty easy uh, this is the next one that needs to be removed again it gets pulled off and then this panel gets pulled off again for our installation we'll need to use two can wires a pair they have to be in a pair the uh, can high is purple white right here and can low is purple green so right now we'll test uh, both wires and we'll show you guys uh, the voltage we'll need to start the car we'll start with the can high which is uh, purple white uh, this one measures from 2.5 volts to 3.75 volts and on our multimeter right now you can see roughly 2.8 volts the next one is can low which is uh, purple green this one measures roughly from uh, 1.25 volts to 2.5 volts and on our multimeter we right now have 2.2 2.18 which means these are two wires that we'll be using for our installation first we need to slide it all the way back Now we will need to loosen two star-shaped bolts. There's one on this side, one on the other. For this we'll need to use the E12 socket. Don't take them off all the way yet, just loosen them for now. Now move it all the way to the front and this will give us access to two bolts in the back. We can remove them completely. A 
and now again I will move it to the back. Since we'll be disconnecting the electrical connector, right now we will disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Uh, this way we won't get any error codes in our vehicle. We need to disconnect this connector under the seat. The trick is to push it completely down, like that. Now, you could easily disconnect the battery. And the next step, we have to disconnect this plastic plug. And the last step, we have to remove And now we can lift the chair up. After you guys have removed this plastic cover, this will give you access to the bolt, which holds the seat belt in place. And uh, when you remove this bolt, you will be able to completely take the whole seat out of the vehicle. We'll show you again how the cover looks like. On the inside, we've got a number of clips that hold it in place. It is the best to remove it when the seat is out and you will need to use a couple of uh, trim removal tools to make it happen. In the back each seat has a couple of studs which go in these openings, one on this side, one on the other and two other holes are for our bolts. So when you guys remove the seat keep it in mind that you have to lift uh, the back up to take the seat out. I'll show you guys what we have underneath uh, the seat. We have a bunch of connectors right here. Besides that we've got a couple of motors which control the movement, the position of the seat. And again if you ever need to access them, if they go out of order for example, this will be the way to do it. Underneath the seat again we have the connector which we removed to take the seat out. This is how it looks. Besides that we've got the air conditioning exhaust right here and also we have the uh, sound system amplifier. It's been held by three bolts and we have a bunch of connectors underneath so if you guys ever need to uh, access it or take it out this will be the way also underneath this cover you will see the VIN number uh, that would be the way to check if all the VIN numbers in your vehicle match we'll need to use 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt And uh, for the other two, we'll need 8 millimeter socket. I'll show you guys uh, the part number for this one. Also we have these connectors in the back. We can remove them and uh, then we'll be able to replace this part. Oh, I 
ничего ей больше не нужно. Right now we will remove the central console cluster. Uh, this will allow us to remove uh, this uh, panel and uh, we will route our wiring from here all the way to the CAN wires. This is how the plastic cover looks like. Uh, we've got the part number right here, made in Germany. Uh, besides that, we've got the switch for the parking brake button and for the after start stop button. And again, the numbers so guys what we need we need access to these two screws one and the second one so when we remove it we uh, will remove two bolts on the back it could move the whole cluster slightly back we will remove two screws torx 25 You might need magnet to remove these screws. And the second one. Uh, there are two more bolts on the sides. First we have to remove this cover on each side. And there's a bolt right there. We need 8 mm socket for these two bolts again one on each side now you can lift up the back and start pulling and it will come out from the front side now we can remove this control panel you have to reach underneath and uh, pull towards yourself it's been held by a number of clips and uh, you will see electrical connector right here this is our panel again show you guys what we have on the other side this is our electrical connector and here we have it says try to show you C CSM panel left hand drive blonde and right here we've got uh, the number underneath the central console you guys will see the airbag sensor I'll try to show you one right here and we've got a couple of connectors on the left there's one big one in the middle and the wiring goes out this way and there's another connector uh, which gets connected right here this is our main module We'll have to connect uh, the power connector right here, LVDS connector over here on this side. Also we have a uh, Wi-Fi connection and the USB connection. Uh, you don't have to touch any of these. Uh, the box will be hidden inside our central console in this opening, so we'll put it over there and uh, secure it later uh, with tape. So as you can see there is enough room in the central console to easily 
uh, put our box inside. Right here I have the main power cable. You can see lots of connectors. We won't be using all of them, only a few. Um, the original connector from our vehicle will be connected to this gray one, like this. Then uh, the other end will get connected to the uh, head unit, which we removed. And uh, this is our main power connector, which will go right here. Besides that, we have LVDS cable. Same idea, we have a T-splitter here. So the original connector will go, will be connected this way. One end will get uh, connected to the screen, to the head unit. And one more end will get connected right here to our unit. So our main wire will go through the opening inside. And uh, uh, these two splitters, two gray connectors and two blue connectors have to go up. Once you guys remove the panel in the middle, you should be able to reach the wiring and uh, pull it up. Okay, that's one, and uh, the second one. Uh, the single piece will go inside through the hole. And two connectors on the other side, again, will go up towards our head unit. And here they are. After you guys pull the wire, make sure that they move more or less freely. Well, they have to move freely. After you push the central console back in, this, this means they're not pinched and uh, they will provide the proper signal for our device. Now I connect the original connector that belongs to the vehicle uh, to this one right here. And I will connect again the original blue connector from the vehicle to the new one that belongs to our device. And uh, both of them now will be connected back to the original screen. Gray one and uh, the blue one. Now we can Hide the wires and reinstall the head unit. Now we can pull out all the wires that we have and we'll start to make these connections. We also have the Wi Fi antenna which should be connected to our box. Uh, we decided to hide it behind uh, our head unit as well, so we'll basically repeat the procedure and put antenna behind the head unit. This is our Wi Fi antenna, and we will hide it behind this plastic panel. It says uh, on the antenna that it cannot be attached to metallic objects. Now I will connect our Wi Fi cable to the box. We've got uh, USB which we will connect shortly. We've got LVDS cable it will be connected this way. We have the power cable which belongs to our main wiring harness. We have another wire in the set which has uh, our USB cable on this side. It also has connector for the microphone and uh, it will be connected right here. 
the microphone will be connected right here this is our microphone we have a long cable it's up to you guys if you want to don't want to connect it uh, it activates voice control for our box for our second system uh, so if you want to have voice control you can connect it and hide it somewhere um, another cable important cable that has to be connected is our can wires we have two can h and can l can high and can low which will be connected to this connector it says can on it it will be connected right here and uh, these two clamps will go to the wiring inside the vehicle the can wires will go like that there's an opening on the side here the USB cable will also take similar pass as the can you can hide all the wiring and the box under the central console and before you put it in all the way don't forget to connect our Wi-Fi antenna and uh, the USB wire can go uh, through this beam so it enters over there and we put it out uh, on this side When you guys reinstall the seat, you have to make sure that both studs, one on the right side and one on the left side, both 
go into appropriate openings. We install all four bolts. Now we can reinstall the electrical connector under the seat. Now we can reinstall the negative terminal on the 12 volt battery. Use 10 millimeter socket. Type of bolt. Torque is 6 newton meters. Our can wires come with two clamps. One is for can high and one is for can low. Our can high wire is uh, purple white, which you can see right here, and our can low is purple green. Uh, we decided to solder two wires to the existing can high and can low wires for easier uh, demonstration. And uh, later on, we plan to install male female connectors, remo removable ones. Uh, which will allow us to uh, disconnect these wires in case if you need to do that. But for the purpose of uh, direct connection to the existing wires, you guys can definitely use these connectors and connect them to purple green and uh, purple white accordingly. Uh, right now we will demonstrate it on these two wires. Uh, our yellow represents purple white and our green represents purple green. Again guys, the yellow is our uh, purple white which is can high so connect this clamp to the yellow in this case you need to use needle nose pliers to clamp it and uh, repeat the procedure on the second wire in this case is purple green What happened in this case is uh, the clamp cuts the insulation and touches our wires, therefore allowing uh, for the connection to happen. I want to quickly demonstrate to you guys how, again, how this connection was done. Uh, uh, these wires that we used are actually thicker than the original. You can tell by the diameter of the wires that it's supposed to take. These guys are much thicker. Uh, that created a problem. We couldn't fully close these clamps they would cut the insulation but they would remain uh, partially open so what we did in this case we cut uh, the insulation cut it off and uh, connected to the wires directly uh, then we were able to uh, lock them all the way you have to keep this in mind when you guys work with these wires that they have to be fully uh, locked Otherwise, there may not be connection and uh, uh, your module and your central display in general won't function at all. So at this point it's working. Uh, we did this just as a test. Uh, as I said before, we will install different connectors, more reliable ones, uh, to connect these wires to our wires that are connected to original wiring in the vehicle. Again guys, these are our clamps on our wires and look at this. I'll start the vehicle. First of all our central display is working and and once I swipe it with two fingers we get to our uh, module interface. You can also just press this button press and hold and it will uh, get again to this interface which again means that everything was done right at this point all wires were connected properly and this connection that you guys can see right now allows us to communicate with our vehicle we will temporarily isolate our wires uh, because 
bare wires should not touch each other. Uh, again, this is a temporary measure before we uh, get uh, proper connectors and install them. After the installation, you may notice that in Google Maps uh, there is no uh, option for entering the address. You can't, when you press it, nothing happens. Also, you cannot move the map and you cannot zoom in and zoom out. Uh, the reason for that may be that the software uh, in the device is not up to date. And right now, I will show you how to update it. You will need to ask the manufacturer to send you the updated uh, version of the software and then you'll have to unzip it to the flash uh, USB drive. Also, when you guys uh, do it, make sure that the flash drive that you use is high speed, otherwise the update may not work. And I will also try to leave you the link for the updated software in the description. You will have to insert the USB drive into our uh, USB port, and now you have to exit, first of all, Oh, actually, immediately it will give us the screen after we insert the drive. Uh, what you guys will have to do is to go home first, then go to settings. You have to go to the information, then about version. And here you will see the current version of the software. In this case, it's 23.11, oh, sorry, 23.12.27. And as you can see, we have the update button available right now. So I'll press update and um, it will provide us the new version of the software. In this case it's 240103 and you will see another button update SOC. This is the one that we need to press. Shortly our uh, unit will reboot and it will update its software. And now, as you guys can see, it gives us uh, the old version, which I mentioned before, and it also shows us the new version that has been installed.
well it's actually in the process of installing it right now again guys I want to point out that you have to use high-speed USB drive because if you use, use uh, older USB stick for example it uh, may not work after that you have to press and hold the button shortly device will become available and then uh, initially it will show us again the USB uh, stick screen so I'll go back to home we'll go back to settings uh, information about version and uh, right now as you can see our current software has been updated and now it's 240103 I will go to the Android after again I'll, I will have to reconnect my phone and here is our Google Maps again and as you guys can see we now have the search option actually we have uh, more options and uh, we've got the zoom so I'll show you guys now it works we can zoom out we can zoom in like I said we can search for recent addresses we can also enter new addresses directly from the original screen which is great I will go back so now everything is working properly again guys if you need to uh, make to do this update uh, as I said I will try to leave you a link for the uh, up-to-date version of the software